Howdy and welcome to Mr. Maple Show. Y'all, we've got the Tenant 10 for September 10th of 2024. I'm Dylan. And I'm Tim. And guys, we're going to talk about 10 trees on the table or blowing off the table today. They're getting listed at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. These trees are going to blow you away. Guys, starting off, we've got Circe's Canadensis Hearts of Gold. Now, this is a really great red bud. I was just introduced to red buds when I moved into this area last year in June, and I love these trees. This is a really, really cool example of one with this light yellow green chartreuse color, huge heart shaped leaves. This is a keeper. Yeah, this is a selection that was found by our good friend John Rothling. We've actually got a podcast with him talking, him and his wife, Adrian, talking about the power couple of horticulture. And he goes in and talks a little bit about how he found Hearts of Gold. This is one of the most yellow selections of those red buds. And Cersei's Candensis Hearts of Gold, it's a native. So this is actually a native selection that has this yellow green color, performs well, many parts all across the country. It's a beautiful tree with those heart shaped leaves. Yeah, absolutely. It's a rigorous grower, 10 feet in five years with a final height of 20 to 25 feet over its maturity in 10 to 15 years. Um, on top of that, the pink lavender buds that come out in the spring before the leaves will show up on first year wood, which is atypical to red buds. Yeah, so you really get there's some really nice blooms on hearts of gold as well. I mean, that's what people normally think of of red buds. That's why it's, they have a common name, but of red buds, but the, the foliage on this, outstanding as well. I'm a foliage person, so when you can get flowers plus foliage, that's just a double bonus. It's a winner. Up next, guys, Acer Palmatum Kennedale Sunrise. Yeah, this is a selection by our friends down at Metro Maples. Keith Johansson, who actually you know started Metro Maples, he found this selection. It's heat tolerant because it's from down there in Texas, but it was also selected and named after Kennedale, Texas. Very cool. Uh, when it leaves out, it comes in with a really nice green color with golds and yellows over the leaf. Um, and as it grows through the summer, you see this gradient from the lighter new growth to this darker old growth towards the base of the tree. Eight to 10 feet in 10 to 15 years, it stays on the smaller side. Yeah, and in the fall color, you get those yellows to oranges. I mean, this is a classic one that has that tightly layering habit, similar, similar to something like a Makawiya tabusa with a unique style leaf. You know, this is, that very unusual selection kind of in that Makawa family. Uh, it's kind of in that Makawa Shishigashira like family. Mm. And it's one that you're going to really love. It's unique. It's different. It's going to sell out quickly today. So make sure you check out fast. Y'all next up, we've got Quercus Robur, General Pulaski. This is a really, really unique tree. It caught my eye immediately when I walked into the greenhouse. It um, almost reminds me of like the oak version of Shishigashira with its weird curly leaves and real tight structure. 10 to 12 foot tall over the course of its maturity and about three to four foot wide. It maintains a real columnar growth pattern. Yeah, it stays very tight, dense. Those curled up leaves are give a unique texture out there in the landscape. To me, if you like English oaks, this is a must have. If you're into oaks at all, you got to try to grow this plant. And if you just like that unique texture this tree provides, it's pretty spectacular. I have read some descriptions that said, it looks like aphid damage. <laughs> like, come on, y'all. We got to do better than that. That's really not doing this tree justice because this tree is spectacular. It's amazing. It's extremely rare and it's difficult to propagate. So it's something you don't typically find many places other than here at Mr. Maple because it's extremely hard to propagate and it's pretty rare. Yeah, don't miss it. You don't know the next time it'll be available. Y'all, take advantage of these today. Got some good size one gallons of Quercus for Bird General Plasti. All righty, next up. Acer palmatum, Goshiki Kotohime. Yeah, this one is a dense, compact dwarf, really small leaves, excellent for bonsai. I mean, you can actually, these are grafted that we have here, but you can actually put these out in the landscape, take rooted cuttings or air layers off of this and make a lot of bonsai material from this. I mean, this is such an awesome hardy tree and it's just got a unique habit that makes this tree extra special. Totally, these really deep green leaves that have some oranges and reds through the new growth. It's a really phenomenal tree, a little bit like Makawa again with those stacked shingled leaves. These ones in particular are so full. Yeah, the new growth on this can really get some really nice shades of red with flecks of variegation. In it. That's where it gets the name of Goshiki Kotohime. It's not all the time you see that variegation, but with Goshiki Kotohime, you can get that. The dense compact habit, Makes this tree excellent for small spaces, great for containers. 
like I mentioned earlier, great for bonsai, but it's such a useful tree and it's a durable tree. It can handle a lot of heat. And for that reason alone, this is a tree you definitely need to try out. Yeah, five to six feet over the course of its maturity in 10 years, it fits in almost any space, in a pot, in the, in the ground, a great tree and a must have. Now, these that we've got here in one gallons, these are pretty large one gallons for Goshiki Kotohime. I mean, you see a tree this size on Goshiki Kotohime, it's very unusual to see a one gallon this large. I mean, these are some spectacular specimens. Take advantage of these sizes today. Guys, next up, we've got some one gallons, some pretty large one gallons of Acer Palmatum and Irene. This is originally a sport off of summer gold. Um, so you may see some similar coloration in it. It has these lighter green yellow leaves that have a orange red lining through the spring months and then turn more to just green over the course of the summer. Maintains an upright and tighter habit. Now, this was found by our good friend, Dick Vandermat, who recently passed away, like you mentioned, as a sport on summer gold. And because of this, this tree also displays the same heat tolerance as summer gold, which is amazing because normally you don't get variegation that can handle the sun or yellows that can handle the sun. This one can do the exact same thing as summer gold. You know, you may see some burn when it's first getting established. After it's established, this tree performs excellent in full sun in many climates. You know, those zone nine Floridas, you're going to need some protection from the hot afternoon sun, but many other places, this one will be able to handle it. And it's a rock star in the garden. It adds that yellow color out there that just gives that vibrance to all the shades of green, allows you to see every shade of green, contrasts well with everything in the garden, especially your red Japanese maples. Absolutely. Uh, it stays on the smaller side, six to eight feet in 15 years or so. So not too big of a tree in your garden. Um, one of the things that really catches my eye about it the most is the heavy serration along the leaves. They almost look like feathers to me. Not quite Hinezu, Hinezu Hagoromo and how dissected they are, but a very feathery leaf. And the interesting thing is if you grow this tree, if you grow Irene in full sun in the early spring, those heavy serrations, they can be orange on the outside with yellow on the inside. And pushing out in the sunlight, you get more intense dynamics between the orange red color on the edge and then the yellow color in the center. Later on in the season, like right now, you're going to get a darker green on yellow green uh, in the center. But y'all, this, this selection is phenomenal for that color contrast in the early spring. And the colors this thing does in the spring, it's outrageous. You don't get or, you know, yellow trees with orange red borders. It's outstanding. It's a rock star. You should definitely be growing anirene. Get it today. They go fast. Coming up next, we got Acer Palmatum Shinda Sojo. This may be one of the most red spring trees we offer here at Mr. Maple. This thing leafs out vibrant. It is so bright and fiery, immediate eye catcher to start the year. Yeah, and the vibrant spring color goes to a green during the summer. Red new growth appears again with that secondary flush of growth. People are often confused when you see a photo of Shinda Sojo in the spring versus the fall because they're just as intense, which is really spectacular. It's crazy to have something that is so consistent in the spring with that color of Shinda Sojo gives and also can give that same fire engine red fall color. This is a tree that is extremely popular for bonsai. I know we mentioned Goshiki Kotohime is popular. Shinda Sojo is extremely popular as well. And it's because it goes through the changes of the seasons. People enjoy Japanese maples because you can see the change between spring, summer, fall, and with Shinda Sojo, you see all of that. And it's a tree that you're going to really come to enjoy the changes of the seasons, even in the ground. In the ground, this can make a larger tree. And it's just so intense that it's, it steals the show. I'm, it's, a, it's an award winner, the 2018 Maple of the Year by the Maple Society. And that year-round um, interest and ability to show off at, during the different seasons, it, it makes absolute sense why it would be a tree that has been, received awards and is so worth growing in the garden. Now, it's also extremely durable. It's one of the reasons it's received a lot of awards. It can handle more sun than many selections. And the intensity of the color increases in the sunlight. Now, if you give it some protection from the hot afternoon sun, morning sun, afternoon shade, you'll hold on to that spring color a little bit longer. Y'all, this is an intense color display. Plant this out there with the summer gold and Anne Irene, 
and you're going to really get some intense colors playing off of each other. Absolutely. Next up on today's 10 to 10 is Acer Palmatum Clarabel. Now, apparently this tree gets its name from a clown that had the yellows and oranges that Clarabel provides in the spring. This is an excellent candidate to pair with that cinder soju we were just mentioned earlier because you get intense oranges and yellows in the early spring that you can pair out there with your cinder soju for some of those spring interest uh, Japanese maples. You get the whole spectrum of color through it. This is a pretty average tree, 10 to 15 feet over the course of 15 years, and it maintains a little bit tighter, more of a columnar habit, though it's still a, a standard tree that branches out as it grows. Yeah, if you're looking for a unique spring interest, this is one of those styles in that Katsura type lineup. It can give you a lot more oranges and intense colors when it does that. Uh, for me, this is one of those rare trees. You don't see it listed that frequently, but it is one of those trees that you're gonna grow to love because the more you see this tree in the spring color and those yellow green colors during the summer and the intense colors in the fall, you're gonna love Clarabel. Y'all next up, we've got one of the rarest of the ghost series, Acer Palmatum Baby Ghost. Yeah, this is the smallest of the ghost series. And when it leaves out in the spring with those reds and that uh, super stereotypical ghost reticulation through the veins, it is just a fabulous tree. I mean, it probably has one of the scariest names of the ghost series. You've got yeah. Grandma Ghost, you've got Amber, Purple, First, Baby Ghost. That's something that sounds a little bit to be scared about. But this is one of the slowest growing of the ghost series, typically reaching six to eight foot in height in 10 years. It's got this unique semi-pendulous habit to it, which is pretty spectacular. The original Baby Ghost is actually in Seattle, Washington. Uh, we actually got to go see it at Kubota Gardens Y'all, it's cool just to see one of the originals, one of the very first of its kind. Baby Ghost, selection by Talon Buckholtz, it really brings it. It's a unique tree in that it is often as wide as it is tall. Um, and as Tim said, it's a little bit on the shorter side, but it really fills up a space. And with all of these colors that you get through it, the variegation throughout the leaves, it's a, it's a real specimen out in the yard. Yeah, make sure to give this one plenty of room to grow just because, you know, it's got this wide spreading habit. Often people think six, eight foot, you know, typically it's canopy is going to be three to four, uh, three fourths of its height. This one, like you were saying, is going to have the same uh, width as it is in its height. It is a colorful tree with some really nice amber hues with that reticulated variegation that makes the ghost series famous. You see the veins are very prominent in the early spring. It just gives this eerie like feel that really just gives that ghost name. Totally. I feel like we got a lot of yellow on today's 10 at 10. We started out with Hearts of Gold and Irene. We got some Clarabelle in there. And then guys, next up, we've got Easter Palmatum Dragon Master. The Yellow Weeper. Yeah, a introduction here at Mr. Maple, part of our Area 51 collection. This is a really cool tree. Orange dream leaves over Ryusin cascading branches, just phenomenal. Yeah. In the early spring, you really get some really nice orange colors. And then it goes to like a butter yellow. Push this tree out with a little bit of sunlight like you do with Orange Dream, and you can really get those bleached out yellows that you can get on Orange Dream as well. Although Dragon Master can handle more sun than Orange Dream by far. This selection is extremely cascading like Ryusin, like you're mentioning. That means that it has a heavily pendulous habit that you can grow as a ground cover. You can put this in a hanging basket or you can stake it up and let it flow down kind of like a fountain. So as Tim said, it will sort of just naturally grow into ground cover, but they're very responsive, responsive to training and will grow as high as you stake them, allowing you to really design and craft your garden into the image that you're looking for. Yeah, one of the coolest things I saw at Kobayashi Mumiji Inn is when they took a Ryusin, which has a similar habit, and they grew it as a topsy-turvy and allowed the tree to actually cascade downward from the bottom of a pot. So that was a fun way to grow the style of a Japanese maple. And then years down the road, you know, you flip that pot over and you've got a tree that looks like it's been staked on every single one of its branches, like a perfect stake, because then it just flips and starts growing down, weeping the other direction. That is so cool. So just a, a cool way. I mean, wherever you travel to places like Japan, you see things around the world that you're like, man, that's amazing. Why don't we do it that way? No, absolutely. It just goes to show how much creative input you can really have into designing the aesthetic of your garden. Yeah, Dragon Master was one of the very first yellow selections. We actually got it at the same time, uh, early 
And we'd found this unique seedling and Don Shadow had another seedling that we were evaluating. I actually had three seedlings we were evaluating. And then Talon Buckholtz had two selections of yellow weepers. And for us, Dragon Master really stood out from Talon Buckholtz's selections. And those three are the ones that are pretty much in the nursery trade today with Dragon Master being more of that orange dream type. We've got uh, Golden Falls, which has more of those Katsura type leaves. And then there's the Yellow Cascade, which has these butter, butter yellow leaves, real large, just, just mm -hmm. bright yellow leaves. So three different yellow weepers in the trade, but how many upright yellows are there? There's, oh, there's a ton countless. of, yeah. So we always say, you know, there's room for some uprights. There's definitely some rooms for some of these cool weepers like Dragon Master as well. Yeah, get yours today. Last up on our 10 of 10 today, Acer Sebolianum Kumoi Nishiki. Yeah, I like this tree because this is a full moon style Japanese maple being an Acer Sebolianum. And it has a unique style of variegation with white splotching across the leaves, being really one of the first of its kind, having that full moon leaf and that unique splotching variegation style. Yeah, it's almost like a white dust over top of the leaves like they almost it almost looks like you could rub the variegation off of them as you walk through the houses um, it does turn yellow and orange through the fall and that variegation stays it's a really really cool aesthetic that you don't see very often i feel like you either have variegation or you have nice fall color very rarely do you get both together yeah and that's one of the things about kumoi nishiki the the fall color on this is just electric it's one of the better fall color Japanese maples. It has a good upright form, typically reaching that six to eight foot in height in 10 years. I do recommend giving some protection from the hot afternoon sun and hotter climates for Kumoi Nishiki. But this is a tree that just rocks it out with a, a little bit tighter of a habit than many other Japanese maples. Yeah, and being a Sebaldianum, like you said, protected from the hot sun, but it is more cold tolerant than a lot of Japanese maples we offer. Yeah, and that means if you're in a zone five and you get some of those polar vortexes, some of these Sebaldianums in those zone fives will actually outperform some of your Acer Palmatums. Uh, pretty awesome, really hardy selection to have out there in your garden. Y'all, that was the 10 trees getting listed at 10 a.m. There's another 10. Check out your weekly email, y'all, because there's 10 more in that email. You can get that head start on some of the people so you know what to look for when 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time hits on MrMaple.com. Take care. God bless. Have a great day.